I've got two questions. Hello, Lou. Nice to see you. Uh, people know you as Luis Falcao, but uh, you like to be called Lou as well. It's just so much easier to be called Lou um, and easier to remember. Uh, hello, Andreas, and thanks for, for having me on this talk. Um, good to see you again. It's been a while. We just spoke and you said you like to be asked questions that you didn't expect. So let's see how we go with this one. Why do you think is A Course in Miracles your path? It was just the most natural progression for someone who was raised Christian and who believed, believed, believes in God and believes in Christ and believes in the Holy Spirit. And, and when I say belief, not a conceptual belief, an experiential belief of a strong inner experience of Holy Spirit in many different experiences in my own life, this um, belief in um, the man Jesus who became the Christ in totally understanding and believing his ability to become God man um, in the full realization that we're all connected one as one being the fact that he was able to demonstrate resurrection and ascension and um, and bring us into an awareness that there was so much more than this world that life is not birth and death and then that's over and then you travel somewhere else but Christianity It didn't hold enough answers for me. And there was a natural progression to non-dualistic path. Um, but you've heard, and many people do hear, many conflicting terms like uh, what is consciousness or what is awareness, what is the self, soul, spirit, um, holy spirit. And, and the course was a natural progression for someone who had been moving away from dualistic um, understanding and perception of the world and was ready to see the world another way. And I'd, I'd walked away from mainstream religion for many years, but I'd never walked away from God or Christ or, or Holy Spirit. And the conversations that I had with, with, with Jay or Jesus continued for many years. And I was born with these um, so-called psychic talents um, and that didn't make any sense, which of course now make total sense when you not look at the world non-dualistic. So A Course in Miracles was a most natural progression for someone who had a relationship with God and Christ and the Holy Spirit, but needed to go into a deeper experiential understanding of it as opposed to conceptual constructs um, written 2000 years ago that made us worship a deity exclusively and subjectively and objectively and and you become part of a club that 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 believes it's right and everything else is wrong and so course in miracles was for me the most beautiful natural adoption of a deeper understanding that Christ experienced on this earth and has wanted us all to experience. Maybe that ties into one of your um, talks or the talk that you'll be giving at the festival, which is life after awakening. Um, so you mentioned, okay, uh, it was a natural progression for you to find a cause of miracles. And uh, you used the term, You used the past term there, past tense, A Course yeah. of Miracles was. So what is it now? What, is, what do you want participants or visitors to this festival to take away from your talk, Life After Awakening? In, on the 10th of November in 2011 was the first time I read A Course of Miracles properly. Like I got into the course. I'd, I'd bought it many years prior, quoted from the chapter in Forgiveness in my second book, The Reawakening of Consciousness, and I couldn't get into the book at all. It just didn't make any sense. I found some of it 
very difficult to accept, easy to comprehend. I found that I've always found the course easy to comprehend, but not accept. And I, I, I even felt a little offended by some of the terms. And I gave the book away. And when I picked it up the second time, um, I must always thank Gary Renard because he's, his book, um, The Disappearance of the Universe, made it click for me. It was, it's such a great contributing book that brings students to, or teachers for God to this course. Um, so to go back to, to, the, to the question, when I say the course, A Course in Miracles was, there wasn't a single day for those next 10 years where I didn't read the course. I did the, I read the Course in Miracles seven times, cover to cover, and I did the work, workbook and manual for teachers seven times, almost religiously as I, as I fanatically do anything, um, for seven years in a row. And then there was a slowing down and a really deeper grasping and, and spending a little bit more time on on certain quest on certain lessons, um, which really grabbed me. And then just the experience of it. And, and last year I, I chose to read the, the course again, cover to cover and, um, and do every single exercise, you know, in the 360, 356 in, in a row, 365 in a row. And I was in Ibiza last year in a course in miracles. Um, Carolina had invited me to come and talk. And shortly after I arrived in Ibiza, I had this overwhelming need to be alone, which was the strange thing. Now, I've just come to a conference to share and teach. And from the moment I arrived, I just wanted to be alone. I actually didn't want to talk to anyone. I didn't want to participate. In any, I just wanted to be alone. And something amazing happened. I, I managed to spend a lot of time on my own. I think several of the teachers... And some students were offended because I didn't participate in everybody's classes. I spent a lot of time on my own and just huge conversation happened. And it just flipped me again. It, it was a radical transformation again. Um, just as the course had been such a radical transformation from a very spiritual psychic life this was again an incredible flip. And, and, and since October last year, I've become very reclusive, um, spending a lot of time on my own and having almost no conversations at all with anyone unless it's related to awareness and consciousness. Mm -hmm. you know, so very little small talk. I almost don't want to talk. You know, It's almost like... My favorite, my favorite thing in the world, ice cream and motorcycles, has completely lost its flavor. It's just like, if, would you eat an ice cream if it tasted like water? Probably not. Exactly. So the, it, the whole point of an ice cream loses the point if it has no flavor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? So it's almost like that motorcycling, which gave me a certain amount of joy and peace and, and excitement is gone. It's just mm -hmm. gone. It's okay. gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a collection of beautiful classic motorcycles and some state of the art race bikes. Um, I have no desire to play. Is it I have no desire for ice cream. Is it replaced by something like, uh, Okay, this there's incredible. Like it's just this. Uh, it's just replaced with this incredible state of inner peace and contentment. Inner peace is such a strange word, but it's just full. I'm just so content. So this lockdown period is. I've been completely content being locked down. You know. I've been completely content spending these last 50 days on my own. And, um, and I haven't been actively meditating or praying or I've just been going through the motions and, you know, doing what a person does in his home and, um, and just completely and totally content.
Mm -hmm. And I'm also, as I watch the world at play and the COVID-19 and the conspiracy theories and the, and the, and the, and all the funny things that are going on in the background and, and I've not bought into any of it and I'm not in resistance to any of it. And I'm just watching all of it. And I realized that this is such a precious time where if you focus on this current time and use this time to fully be at peace with that part of yourself, which is at peace with everything else, it is the time of the connection. This is the connection. You know, in the, the, the Christian belief in something called a rapture, there's a certain school of Christianity that believes that there's going to be a rapture where people are just going to be floating up into the sky and I don't know what happens to their bodies and, you know, and then, and the sinners will remain on this earth and, and, and the people that follow Jesus will all just float back up to the sky and to heaven. I mean, that's a little bit extreme in the way they take something quite symbolic and, and make it into a physical activity. I believe that right now what we're experiencing on the world is the time of the rapture, is, is the time of a revelation. Now, the revelation has happened many a time. You know, um, revelation is, is a story of, of a progress of consciousness and what happens just before consciousness, as you've often heard before, you know, um, the darkest time is just before the dawn. So I believe the world is going through its darkest time. What emerges from this is what all the books wrote about in 2012 is this emergence of a new state of awareness mm -hmm. and a, a radical shift up that you'll conscious, those people that are consciously aware will be consciously aware of a considerable quantum step up in awareness. And would you say yeah. that, uh, that that is what you wanted uh, participants of your talk to take away from, that uh, they're uh, exposed to, to another potential of well, awareness? When you and I spoke about this topic a while ago, little did we know this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And it's almost as if we've picked this, this topic most perfectly, or it was picked for us. You know, what happens to us after awareness, after awakening, you know, after... Mm -hmm. and, and, and the course itself says this isn't the final course. This isn't the, the end of the journey. Um, there's an incredible teacher out there in the UK right now, which I really urge everybody to at least listen to a few times. And his name is Rupert Spira. Please look him up. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Rupert is, is a phenomenal teacher and he, and, he's, and he articulates so incredibly well. Now, he's not a course teacher, but non-dualistic teachings, is, it's the same, different terms and so on. And he talks about something the course talks about. Um, and is, that is the I am, the I am awareness, the, the conscious Christ awareness, um, and, and the awareness of the ego or the separate self. What happens after we get this awareness? Now, as I mentioned previously, we all get glimpses into it at some stage or some stages of our life. We get this glimpse of this total silent state of complete conscious awareness of what is and then we pursue more of it mm -hmm. and there comes a time in our life where it becomes us it most of the vessel most of the device most of the separate self device fades away and its place remains this awareness it's it's again i'm looking for words to explain a state of complete contentment and peace and and that in itself is joy when that when that becomes us what meant something or what was important in the past what we people places things and events the very obstacles to peace which we so resisted letting go of because we felt that would make us happy. When that disappears, what, what is left behind is the very essence of everything we've been looking for. You know, it's yeah. simply we've just parted the curtains. The curtains have parted and, this, and you've been listening to this wonderful orchestra and, and looking at the curtain to see where the sound is coming from. And you part the curtains and there's the orchestra. There is. It's always been there. Mm -hmm. it's always been you it's always been you 
without any idea of yourself, with any expectation of yourself. And, and, and life after, after awakening is just the same as life before awakening, just in multicolor and the most beautiful scenery without any expectation, any judgment, and without any desire for it. It just is you. It's no longer something outside you that you're searching for. The very mechanism that's been searching for that is now gone. And that which was being sought is the very thing you're presently aware of. So there's, a, there's, a, there's, this, there's this person, there's this separate being that goes looking for this. And as, it, as, it about, as it's about to find it, that separate entity disappears. And what remains in place is the very essence of what you've been searching for. Mm -hmm. and, and at that moment, the realization comes, but it's here. It's always been here. So if, I'd only, if I'd only learned to be quiet sooner, this is, incredible. This is one of my favorite videos. It's on, on, um, on YouTube and it's a teaching by Papa G and, and, and he's, and he's a quite a humorous character in his day. And he's obviously, this is probably shot in the late seventies, early eighties, I think. And, and he's got all these people sitting around in the crowd and he starts to laugh and he just starts laughing. This beautiful, spontaneous laughing that comes from inside him. And he says, uh, he says something to them like, you've just traveled halfway across the world and you've come to me for the answers. And my answers are this, and he doesn't say be still, you know, he just says to them, be quiet, <laughs> just be quiet. He, that's it. Just be quiet. And unless we have something to contribute because someone has asked for a perspective, just be quiet. And that's why I guess a part of me loves it when when i'm just being quiet and someone asks me a question because then i don't have to be quiet anymore because <laughs> it's so much, it's now i've got permission to speak again because now i can contribute and if not just be quiet oh well, thank you lou that's that's a very nice prospect to your contribution at the festival and uh, thank you for taking time in this. See thank you, you very soon. Thank you for inviting me. Looking forward to doing this. And uh, see you again very soon. Blessings to all of you. Thank you.